Our next speaker, um, I heard him speak in person for the very first time at our last conference, which was a few weeks ago in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I heard him give the presentation that he's about to give in just a few moments, entitled, The Mother of All Secrets. And I'm here to tell you something. It was powerful. And it moved every single person that was at that conference went away with new information. I guarantee you they went away with new information they had never had before. That's number one. They were motivated, to, I believe, to serve the Lord in a way that they had Amen. maybe never done before. Amen. And they were encouraged to go out and to tell others. It is not a catchphrase for this presentation to be called Mother of All Secrets. I encourage you, do not blink. Because he's going to go fast. He's got a ton of information. Okay, I want him to go fast, but he's got a ton of information. He's not going to, it's okay. Because I want you to see what he has for you today. You do not want to miss this. When he is done, you will be glad if you're not already. You will be glad that you came to the conference today. The name of the presentation is Mother of All Secrets. This is Pastor Michael Hoggard. Make him welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. They gave me two microphones because I don't talk very loud. <laughs> it's good to be here. We had a good trip coming in. And um, our prayers uh, are going out to anybody affected by last week's tornado. I was watching a, a Storm Chaser video on it last night. And wow, what devastation. And uh, pray for those families and pray that those people will get to know the Lord. Can I hear you say Amen. amen. Who brought a Bible to a Bible prophecy conference? Hold it up. There you go. Amen. Now, um, anything that I there's anything I don't get to say today is on this. Well, there's like uh, four DVDs here. There's probably eight hours of teaching on different subjects, DNA, so on, and the secret that I'm going to show you tonight uh, is on this DVD. So, I want to give, they gave me this DVD, I can do whatever I want to with it, I could watch it, but I'm the guy that made it and edited it, so I already know what's on it. So, I want to, I want to do something. Who in here, I need some volunteers who want to win a DVD. First of all, where's all of our Okies at? People from Oklahoma. Okay, I need people that count, so you guys are out. I need... <laughs> By the way, by the way, after I get done, my wife and I, Sweetie Pie, back there, we're out here in this big RV out here. There's a white Ford Taurus that I'm probably going to have to hook up and take with me because it's blocking my way out. So if you own a white Ford Taurus for, with an Oklahoma plate, come see me in St. Louis next week, all right? And I'll give you your car back. All right, I need, I need you to do this. I need you to turn to three places in your Bible. First place is Genesis chapter 2, starting in verse 23 and 24. I need you to count all the words that Adam said in Genesis 2, verses 23 and 24. I believe that's what it is. Second place, I want, need you to look in Genesis 3, verses 1 through 5. And I need you to count all the words that the serpent spoke to Eve. Okay, that's the second place. The third place is Genesis chapter 11. And in Genesis 11, I want you to count in verses 3 and 4 all the words that the people in Shinar said. Okay, just the words they said. In other words, Genesis 2, just the words that Adam said. Genesis 3, just the words that the serpent said. Genesis 11, just the words that the people in the land of Shinar said. Okay? You start counting, and then whoever gets it right gets this DVD. All right? Uh, let's see here. Am I ready to go? That's actually not where I was going to... What version? That's the kicker, isn't it? You just take your Bible and count, all right? All right, while you're doing that, I'm going to explain a little bit about myself. Uh, I pastor the church 
I grew up in. 1974, they had just built this building, and uh, it was Bethel uh, Church at the time. It was still is now. And I started going there when I was eight years old, and my mother got saved at that church, and we've had several pastors since then. I met my wife at our church. She started going there in 1980, I think it was, and uh, we didn't like each other then. And so I went to Bible college actually in Moore, Oklahoma uh, for about two and a half years and went to a Bible college in Nashville, Tennessee for a semester. But by that time, I had already fallen in love with her. And in 1987, we got married at Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri. She went into labor with our first daughter there at, Beth at Wednesday night service. She's sitting there going... Next day, we had our first child. Uh, I became pastor in 1996 uh, under bad circumstances. I don't like to talk about it. But God used that to really get a hold of me. 1997, God said, Mike, I want you to study Bible prophecy. And I said, great, because a bunch of people have written new books. I'm going to go to the bookstore and buy all these prophecy books. And God said, no, I wrote one. <laughs> That's amazing. And so, God, where do you want me to start? Revelation or Daniel? He said, just start reading. And at that time, God blessed our church. I had time to do it. I just consumed the Bible. I read and read and read and read. And then God began to do what He said He was going to do. In Isaiah chapter, I can't remember what chapter it is, but in Isaiah, God said, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. And what God means by that is God always mates things in the Bible together. Old Testament and New Testament. You read the Old Testament for a while. You see the types and the shadows and the numbers. Brother Noah Hutchings. I love numbers and so did he. And so I wrote my first book called By Divine Order. Um, Southwest Radio is going to uh, start republishing those here shortly. And then another one called The King James Code. And that one was funny because... Brother Hutchings wanted to do a rewrite of his book, God the Master Mathematician. And so he came to me and he said, you want to help me write it? And I said, sure, I'll help you write it. And so I did my part of it. I wrote up this manuscript that I sent it to him. And he, either he liked it so much, he said, this should be its own book, or he didn't like it at all and said, I want nothing to do with this. But they published it anyway. So, so they will have copies hopefully by August. August, hopefully. All right. And we'll be doing some programs on that. All right. Who's ready with Genesis chapter 2, verses 23 and 24? What count do you have, sir? 24. 24. 24. 23. 23. 23. 23. 23. 23. 23. Who said? 46. Who said 46? 46. One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. That's where all these stopped. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Ah! Let's try the next one. Who's got the next one? Who says 44? Who says 45? Who says 20? Who says 12? Back, go to the back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Did you get that? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I don't even want to go to Genesis 11. How many? 46. Come on, Salim, give him a hand. You can give that to whoever you want. Come on down. 
Forty dollars. <laughs> you're not Arab. You're Jewish. <laughs> now that number, that number. You'll recognize it in a little bit, okay? You'll recognize it. If you don't recognize what that number is now, you'll recognize it, okay? By the way, uh, my wife and I, we've been living in that RV since February the 15th. Our house caught on fire. And uh, it's all smoke damage and they still haven't finished everything. So we've been living in that thing. And the only thing we have to watch in there is like a little Roku. And the only thing we found worth watching is 24 hours of Price is Right with Bob Barker. <laughs> and so if you come by our RV and you hear him say, Come on down! Don't come on in, okay? <laughs> all right, 46. Now, I'm supposed to talk about the secret of Freemasonry. It's actually the secret of Freemasonry, the secret of Rosicrucianism, the secret or the mystery of the Catholic Church, the mystery of iniquity. In fact, any secret society or any mystery religion throughout history, they've all had just one secret. There's one truth. And there is one great, big, gigantic, humongous lie. Those who believe the Word of God will believe the truth. God will bring you to the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, will guide you into all truth, Jesus said. Those who refuse God's pure Word, and I believe they're pure. The words of the Lord are pure words. You know what that is? Are what pirates say. Arr. It's a present tense word. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified. Seven is what number? Perfect number. Purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever, God said. And so, if we believe that we're walking in the last days... Why should we believe that our Bibles now are wrong in some places? Because after all, Peter, who heard the voice of God say, This is my beloved Son, told us we have a more sure word of prophecy. And so early on, as God is leading me to study Bible prophecy, He focused me upon one book and one book only. And it was this one. And so, I have an inquisitive mind. Uh, several years ago, God had me read the Da Vinci Code. Whoever read, who read the Da Vinci Code? And I was put onto some things in there. Dan Brown wrote about some things in there. It just blew my mind. But it got me interested in the language of symbolism. And I speak symbol now. You show me a, you show me a Masonic symbol, and I can show you exactly what it means from the Bible. Now, that, that then led to his next book called The Lost Symbol. And of course, when he came out with that, I read it. I did some videos on it. And uh, I followed him along through Washington, D.C. I've done a video called Capital Secrets, sort of like The Lost Symbol that takes you through Washington, D.C. and shows you all the secret symbols that are inside Washington, D.C. and so on. But I've always had a fascination for mysteries, secrets. If I see two flies talking together, I want to know what they're talking about. <laughs> Okay, anything that's a mystery, anything that's a secret. And what you're looking at here is you're looking at the secret, but you don't know it. You're looking at the, the biggest secret, kept secret, since Satan first came on the scene. In fact, go back to Genesis 3. I'm probably getting ahead of myself. I'm nervous for some reason. Must be the way you look. Genesis chapter 3, Satan introduced mystery religions, mystery doctrine into the world. And so if you noticed here, this is a lodge, a Freemasonic lodge in Hershey, Pennsylvania. A guy took me there. It smells like chocolate there. I'm not kidding you. It's wonderful. But notice the number. It's lodge 6. The guy said, I've got to show you this. Lodge 666. You think that's part of it? You think that could be part of the secret? I believe it is. 
Uh, what is this? Anybody, anybody here know anything about masonry? What, what symbol is this? Compass. And what is this? Square. What is that letter G? Generations. Some say God. Masons will say, Masons will say 20 different things. That's the thing about masonry is they lie. So, I was up in Michigan doing a talk on this and the car drove by this billboard put up by the Michigan Masons, Masons called Share the Secret. So I said, okay, why not? So I'm going to share their secret. <laughs> Amen? But, I, but in order to do that, I have to do this first. So turn to the 46th book of the Bible. It's 39 in the Old Testament. So that helps you, doesn't it? It's first Corinthians. You're looking at on screen. It's first Corinthians. Guess what first Corinthians tells us? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Who is? We are. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God. That's part of the secret too. Defile the temple of God. What defiles the temple of God? Thank you. One man's got it right here. Jesus said, it's not what goes in the body that defiles the man. It's what comes out of the body that defiles the man. For out of the heart of man is adulteries, fornications, thefts, murders, lying, all of those things. It's interesting because in one gospel he says 17 things, or excuse me, 7 things defile the temple. In another gospel he says 13 things defile the temple. Is 13 a good number or a bad number? Good number. If you look, good and bad, if you look in Revelation chapter 17 and you count the number of words, mystery, Babylon the great, the number of the, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, that's 13 words. And you have types of Babylon all through the Bible. Jericho is a type of Babylon. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. What happened to Jericho? It fell. How many times did they march around Jericho? I get them every time on this. Thirteen times. One time a day for six days, seven times on the set. Y'all can do math. Oh, come on. What kind of schools they have here in Kansas? Bad. That was a sheep. Bad. Him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Then he says in chapter 6, verse 19, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. 2 Corinthians 6, 16, And what agreement hath the temple of God with? Idols. You know what God told Ezekiel in Ezekiel 14? He said, The men of, the men of Israel are coming to me and inquiring of me. And he said, I can see in their hearts, and they have idols in their hearts. And he said, I'm not going to talk to them. For ye are the temple of the living God. Acts chapter 17, verse 24. God that made the world and all things therein. Do this. Turn to 2 Thessalonians 2. I am known for going all script and chasing any rabbit I see necessary. Now, y'all have a choice today. I'm the last speaker before supper. You can either leave and eat food and live, or you can sit and listen to me and die, all right? 2 Thessalonians 2. What's the temple of God? The body. So read to me verse 4. Who opposeth and exalts, Second Thessalonians 2, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he is God, sitteth where? What's the temple of God? The body. Does God dwell in temples made with hands? No. He dwells in bodies. Do they have to be white Caucasian Kansas bodies? Can they be Missouri bodies? 
Can they be European bodies? Can they be Lebanese bodies? Amen? Can they be African bodies? I taught, I taught some of this out in Africa and you wouldn't believe Those people got up and danced. Here are people who have been forgotten by the whole rest of the world trying to eke out a living way out in the country in Kenya. And when I told them that they were made just like everybody else, that they were the temple of the living God, they stood up and danced and cried and shouted. Maybe y'all need a little Kenya in you. Amen. <laughs> this is the wilderness tabernacle. This is the curtain around the tabernacle. This is the courtyard. This is what? The altar. What did they do here? They burnt sacrifice. What sacrifices? Could they bring in like iron nails and rocks? and? Watch this. Anything that the Levite priest could eat afterwards. They brought in food, didn't they? Fine flour, olive oil, birds, goat, lamb, ox. Here's the laver. This is the holy place. And on this side, the north side, watch this, you'll like this. On the north side is the table of showbread. I'll, and who is the table of showbread? Who's the bread from heaven? Jesus. Jesus. And you know, this is the north side. At the north star, there's a constellation that circles around the north star. It's called Draco. It means the dragon. Remember what David said in Psalm 23? Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine. Whew. Isn't it sweet? And then over here is the seven golden candlesticks that look like a tree, an almond tree. Then you have the altar of incense. Back here you have the most holy place. And what's back here in the most holy place? Ark of the Covenant. And in the Ark of the Covenant was Aaron's rod that budded, the pot of manna, and what? Ten Commandments. Uh huh, and the book of the law that Moses wrote. He put it inside the Ark of the Covenant. Now watch this. This also is the tabernacle. Let me show it to you. This is my own artwork. I did this myself. Here's the cell wall. Here's the cell wall. Right here, it's called the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the altar because in every cell of your body, I'm a diabetic so I had to learn this, in every cell of your body you have guards standing at the entrance to the cell wall, they're Levite priests. And before anything can go inside the sanctuary area, the priests have to examine it to make sure that it's fit, that it's right, that it's holy. Okay. Here, at the entrance to my cell, are what's called insulin receptors. Who has diabetes? Thank you. Wow. We'll get together, me and you, all right? <laughs> insulin receptors that only do one thing. They don't let anything in the cell except sugar. Because everything that you ate today, your liver and your body is converting into sugar. And the sugar is going into your bloodstream. The sugar then travels to every cell in your body because it needs it. And when it gets inside the cell, it's carried over to the altar, the mitochondria, and then it's burnt. Just like on the altar, which gives off light and heat, which is why I'm sweating. Okay? This is why you are 98.6 degrees almost every day. It's because every cell in your body is burning sugar. What, is, what happens when you burn sugar? What's left over? Carbon. Everybody breathe out. You just fill the room with your nasty carbon. <laughs> that your blood carried from your cells and, carried and blew out your lungs. So this is the mitochondria that burns all the food that we eat. The, the nucleus is the sanctuary. In the nucleus, you have a nucleola. It is the most holy place. And in the nucleola, you have a book written. 
called deoxyribonucleic acid. And that book of the law determines everything there is about the members of your body. Somebody say amen. amen. Turn to Psalm 139.16 and get out a pen. And next to this verse, underline this verse, and you can either write deoxyribonucleic acid in whatever spelling you want to, <laughs> DNA, or you can draw a picture of DNA because that is exactly 3,000 years ago before anybody knew what made us. David wrote by way of the Holy Ghost, Thine eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect, and in thy book. Whose book? Who wrote the book? God. Who wrote the Bible? God. The book in God's right hand mentioned by the uh, preacher before. Who wrote that book? God. God did. If God wrote it, He owns it. Amen. You are not your own. These women laying out in front of the Supreme Court going, It's my body. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. Amen. I can't wait till they see the guy who authored them. <laughs> In thy book, all my members were... Who wrote them? God. Which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Let me show you what that looks like. In thy book, all my members are written. So, in your DNA book, your fingers, your eyes, your feet, your lips, your smelly armpit... The fact that you have real thin skin here and real thick skin here. You ever notice that? Yeah. Everybody take your finger and pinch yourself right there. Oh, that hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> now see, this is me. I'm real thin skin. You start talking about me and I just, well, I don't like it. But some of us need people like me. Because like in the wintertime, when we're cold, what do we do? We hold our arms close to our bodies. Why? We're transferring the heat from our blood, keeping it our vital organs warm. In the summertime, what do we do? All right? What are we doing with that heat? Hey, smell this. We're letting it out, right? See, God just needs some of us to give comfort to the rest of you. Amen? <laughs> now, what about this skin here? Pinch that. I hardly feel it. You know why that skin's so tough? Because it's the platform for a forklift. <laughs> <laughs> and God wrote all of that. The moment you were conceived, He wrote all of that. Now, watch this. In thy book, DNA, a family. Because the kids always look like dad and mom. So you remember what Adam said in Genesis 2 while you were counting those words? Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. Amen. This boy is the combination of her and him together, isn't he? See, that, by, that, that word is literal. It's not just metaphorical, it's literal. All my members were written, which in continuance, because at first we look like this little kidney bean here. By the way, dogs and monkeys and cats and goldfish, they all look the same way about this same time. But after a while... It's being fashioned, isn't it? But when it started out, there's no arms and legs here. There's no feet. There's no hair. There's no beard. It's nothing. So you know what that makes your DNA? It's not just a book. It's a book of prophecy. Because God wrote down in your DNA that later on you were going to have two arms, two legs, Five fingers, not six. <laughs> Ten toes. 
Some of us, we're going to get to keep our hair. <laughs> and some of you weren't. And that was all written down the moment you were conceived in your mother's womb. You know, you went through ages 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Didn't have a hair on your body. All of a sudden, 12, 13, you start getting... Remember the guys, remember your first scruff right here? Remember that? I hated that. Why didn't it show up at birth? Because my mother would have killed me probably. <laughs> but you see, that was all written for a later time. Just like... Things in this book are not for now. They're coming though, aren't they? Amen. And what determines that? In each child, you know, adolescence and puberty is a little different. Comes at a little different age. What determines that? The book does. What's in charge of my body? My DNA. My DNA just made this sweat coming down out of my... And it makes my insulin. And when I need new blood cells, it determines to make new blood cells. When I need new muscle tissue, it makes new muscle tissue. There's not one central person inside of me that's making... I don't have to tell... Me. In fact, I can't make myself grow, can I? Jesus himself said, which one of you can add a cubit to your stature just by thinking? You can't do it. What does that? The book. What should be in charge of every church in the world? The book that God wrote. Somebody say amen. amen. Is it dinner time yet? Are you ready to go? Continue. Thank you. So, very quick course on deoxyribonucleic acid. It is packaged in 46 packages called chromosomes. What number? 46. How many words did Adam say? And think about it. Think about it. Those 46 words he said described exactly what happens when he and Eve joined together. He donated 23 chromosomes. She donated 23 chromosomes. They put them together. Now there's 46. And a new bouncing baby boy called Cain. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Give the Lord a hand. You are fearfully and wonderfully... So you know what? I think, I think this book matches that book. And see, they're called chromosomes because they found out a long time ago when they first started looking at microscopes that these chromosomes reacted well to dye. Chromos means color. And so, all the chromosomes in your body look like that. What shape is that? I am crucified with Christ. If any man will be my disciple, let him take up... I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your... A... Living sacrifice. Now, oh, wait a minute. I, I, let me change that. All women have all X chromosomes. Men have one chromosome that looks like that. It's a Y. Because married men are always going, Why? <laughs> Am I right? And it's placed inside the cell nucleus. Where did we say Moses, when he wrote his book, he rolled it up like a scroll. What is that? It's a scroll. He rolled it up like a scroll and he put it inside the Ark of the Covenant, which was in the most holy place, which is the nucleola, inside the holy place, which is the nucleus, inside the tabernacle, which is your cells. Whew. See, that's not just a metaphor that you're the temple of God. Every cell in your body says you're the temple of God. Now, watch this. 
When Moses built this tabernacle, did he just do it on his own? God told him every board to put on there. He even showed him the one in heaven and said, build it like this. So God said, put 20 boards down the north side, put 20 boards down the south side, and six across the back. 46 boards holding the book that Moses wrote. Now, somebody, somebody sent me an email and said, a legitimate question. They said, I counted 48. There's a corner board here to hold it together and a corner board here to hold it together. But the primary boards were 20, 20, and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. What does the number 4 represent in the Bible? Matthew, Mark, Luke. Four Gospels. Is there five Gospels? Is there three Gospels? There's four Gospels. The only way to get to God here is through what's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And who's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Jesus. God did that on purpose. Then, this is all done away. Solomon's going to build his temple. When Solomon built this temple, they brought the Ark of the Covenant in, still had the book of the law in it. And in the front of the temple, he built two pillars, Jachin and Boaz. This is very important. Jachin, is, this is 18 cubits, but this is 5 cubits. What's 18 and 5? This is 23 cubits, and this is 23 cubits. 46. 46. Still holding the book of the law. Amen? Amen? And then, that temple was done away. Then they built a new one. It lasted. Herod remodeled it, so they called it Herod's temple. And Jesus said what? Destroy this, and in three days I will build it again. But He was talking about the temple of His body. And who is the body? We are. Amen? Amen. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building. Every temple that God built has the number 46 on it. Every one. Including yours. Amen. Does anybody know what building this is? I'll give you a hint. It's not the temple of God. Yes, sir. It's the Masonic Temple of Washington. Very good. Have you ever been in there? No. If you ever go to Washington, D.C., go in that building. Pray first. Then go in that building. They'll, I, I didn't know they'll let you in. They do tours through it. I went into the Master Lodge Chamber where they have a the worshipful Master Throne is 33 feet tall. Think about that number. And I couldn't figure this out for a long time. In the back of the, of the main lodge room area, they have a pipe organ. I couldn't figure that out until it dawned on me. Ezekiel 28. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. And who is it talking about, brother? Satan. Satan. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> when they built this temple, notice it's two different constructions. This is a Greek temple. This is a step pyramid, Egyptian. So on the Greek temple, if you count these, there are 33 pillars going around it. On the step pyramid, there are 13 steps going to the top. Do the math. 33 plus 13. 46. Do you think that has something to do with the secret? Let me show you another one. Who in here knows somebody that's a mason? I had a relative, he just passed away last year. He was a 32nd degree Shriner. 
Muslim Mason. I know! Sadly, he wasn't. There is the Scottish Rite and the York Rite. And by the way, especially down in the South, most of these guys are members of churches. All over America. How many levels does the Scottish Rite have? If you were to start here as an as a, um, initiate, you go through the Blue Lodge. That's why these steps are blue. One, two, three. If you climb all the way to the top, you've climbed 33, 33 steps. But the York Rite's different. You come in here, you don't have near as many steps to go. 13. 33 plus 13 is? So do you think that has anything to do with the secret? Guarantee you it does. Here's what Albert Pike said. Now, here's what I did. I wanted to know their secret. So I read Dan Brown's Da Vinci Code. I read The Lost Symbol. Didn't find it in there. Then... I thought, okay. I was in a Van Buren, Arkansas, preaching a revival. I went into a bookstore. I said, you got any books on masonry? And the guy went, yeah, I just had some turned in. And he went, Voom, like that. I bought every one of them. One of them was a copy of Morals and Dogma. It's about 800 pages. So I thought, I'm going to find it in there. And I read all 800 some odd pages of Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma. And he explains, sort of explains, every level of Freemasonry. And after reading the book, it dawned on me, he didn't write the secret down. So I read some other books on masonry, a lot of them they're on Google Books. Read all of those from like the 1800s. Didn't find it there. Read Manley Hall's uh, Secret Teachings of All Ages. Read that whole book. Didn't find it there. And I thought, is there a book somewhere that has the secret of Freemasonry? And I was frustrated. And God said, you just haven't read the right book yet. So I started reading this one. Jesus said, there is nothing hid that shall, but shall not be known abroad. Nothing covered that shall not be revealed. I believe God is a revealer of secret things, don't you? So I began to search the scriptures. Let me show you what Albert Pike said. He called the secret the Grand Arcanum, which means great secret. That secret whose revelation would overturn earth and heaven. Let no one expect us to give them its explanation. He who passes behind the veil that hides this mystery understands that it is in its very nature inexplicable, meaning unexplainable. And that it is death to those who win it by surprise as well as to him who reveals it. Bring it on, Fat Albert. Because I'm going to reveal it. He said the truth must... Have you seen Fat... Have you seen Albert Pike? He's... By the way, he started or helped start the Ku Klux Klan. K, K, K. Do this very quickly. Start with A and count to the number or to the letter K. What number is the letter K? Just go A, B, C, D. Huh? 13. No. Back of the... I said back of the row. Back to the... 11. K, K, K. So three 11s is what? What is three? 33. The truth must be kept... Masons don't even sit down without showing some sort of Masonic symbolism. The truth must be kept secret and the masses need a teaching proportion to their imperfect reason. In other words, we have this great fantastic doctrine that will change the world, but we're not telling anybody. Does that sound like the gospel to you? Where Jesus said, go into all the world, but don't tell anybody? <laughs> Masonry, like all the religions, all the mysteries, hermeticism, and alchemy, conceals its secrets from all except the adepts and sages or the elect and uses false explanations and misinterpretations of its symbols to mislead those who deserve only to be misled. So you, as a Mason, you joined a fraternal organization where they admitted 
that they're going to lie to you about everything. To conceal the truth, which is called light from them, and to draw... And by the way, is Satan light? No. But what will he transform himself into? From them and to draw them away from it. Truth is not for those who are unworthy or unable to receive it or would pervert it. But see, that's the opposite of the gospel, isn't it? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to the saved? No. Every living creature. God so loved the world. world that He gave His only begotten Son. So masonry jealously conceals its secrets and intentionally leads conceited interpreters astray. Manley Hall wrote this. If you want to read a book, read, read Secret Teachings of All Ages because Manley Hall was given several million dollars and he went around gathering all these arcane secret books and he read them because he wanted to find out what the biggest secret was. And so he wrote, The book to which this is the introduction is dedicated to the proposition that concealed within the emblematic figures, allegories, and rituals of the ancients is a secret doctrine concerning the inner mysteries of life. Which doctrine has been preserved in toto, which means totally, among a small band of initiated minds since the beginning of the world? What was at the beginning of the world? Genesis chapter 3. Turn to Genesis 3 and just hold your place there. He said, departing, these illumined philosophers left their formula that others too might attain to understanding. But lest these secret processes fall into uncultured hands and be perverted, the great arcanum was always concealed in symbol or allegory. In other words, nobody wrote it down. They drew symbols, they developed handshakes, they developed all sorts of myths and fables and rituals, but no one ever wrote the secret down except God. Do you believe that? So I'm saying, God, okay, I believe it's in the Bible. How in the world am I going to find it? And I prayed, and I sought, and I asked God, and I got mad at Him, and everything else. And finally said, God said, Mike, do you want to know the secret? And I said, yes! <laughs> yes. So He gave me a word. Secret. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known. Now, when you invite somebody to church, do you like have to go, Come here. Come to church Sunday. Is that how we do it? Street preachers go out, stand in street corners, and preach the gospel everywhere. I have a friend. He just texted me today. He said, pray for me, Mike. He used to be in radio in St. Louis. And um, he, his goal, he would move to Las Vegas. His goal was to pass out 300 gospel tracts a day, every day in Las Vegas, Nevada. He finally moved back to the Midwest. He went to a Muslim mosque in St. Louis a couple of weeks ago with chick tracts on Islam. Allah had no son. He took his shoes off, walked into the mosque, and gave each one of those men in that mosque a gospel track. And lived to call me later about it. <laughs> Today, he goes up to another Muslim place up in St. Louis. He sees guards there. He starts putting gospel tracks on the cars. The guards are looking at him like this. So he just went over to the, he wrapped them up in a plastic and he gave them to the guards and said, would you finish passing these out to all the cars for me and turn around and left. <laughs> I love this guy. We're not supposed to be secretive. Do we have any secret doctrines? No. Everything we believe is right here. Amen. Amen. But entice thee secretly. Let us go and serve other Gods, that is part of the secret. The gods thing is part of the secret. The children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. By the way, so did you. 
when you have secret sins, you don't let your wife know about them, or your husband, or your parents, or your children, or your preacher, or anybody else in your church, do you? When you do your sins, do you hide them? I'll raise my hand. Those things that were not right against the Lord and they built them high places in all their cities. Uh, Job 13.10 He will surely reprove you if ye do secretly accept persons. And the Masonic Lodge is full of that. I didn't tell this story up in Indiana, but I'll tell it this one. I have a pastor friend who he took a church. He didn't know it at the time, but the worshipful master of the lodge was in his church, was a deacon in his church. And this worshipful master's son went out with some other boys and on Friday night and they found somebody to pick on and they ended up beating the kid up and ended up killing him. So this deacon's son comes tells daddy what he did. Daddy goes to the lawyer who's in his lodge. They called the judge who's in his lodge with the pastor sitting in the, in the lawyer's office, they worked out that boy's whole deal right there. Slap on the wrist for him. The other two had to go to prison. Does that happen in America? Why do you think we have like the grandest Masonic Lodge in the country in Washington, D.C.? Psalm 1712, like as a lion. Who's the lion? Who says Jesus? Raise your hand. Who says Satan? Raise your hand. The answer is yes. <laughs> Here's your problem. Knowing who is who. Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, or Satan as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if you don't read this, you will never know. Amen? Amen? Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. So, here's why I call it the mother of all secrets. Notice, we have a woman in the Bible. The part of forehead was a name written. Mystery. This is 13 words, all capital letters. God is like, I want you to know this. Her first name is what? Mystery. So think of women in the Bible. I love typology. Men in the Bible will either represent Christ or Antichrist. I'll give you a name. Peter. Christ. Ahab. Yeah, that's easy. David. Goliath. Why? Because he's six cubits tall. Six fingers on each hand, six toes on each foot. Spearhead weighs 600 shekels. David said that thy servant killed both a lion and a bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. In Revelation 13, John said, I saw beasts rise up out of the sea, and he looked like a lion and a bear. Wow. And who won? David. Jesus did. Who got a... And who received a deadly wound in their head on that day? Goliath did. Wow. Mm. So, women in the Bible. On uh, Proverbs, you'll find the virtuous woman, wisdom, and you'll find a strange woman, a harlot. So, if I give you a name like Mary, the mother of Jesus, who is she? Virtuous woman. Uh, Elizabeth. Uh, Sarah. Yeah, she's the mother. She's a picture of Jerusalem above. The mother, of, which is the mother of us all. She's the mother of nations. Uh, let's see here. Jezebel. Hillary. <laughs> Strange woman. Right? Mystery Babylon. Delilah. You know what Delilah does inside of a church? She cuts the seven locks 
You know what those seven locks are? In Revelation 5, John said he saw a lamb that had seven horns, and those are the seven spirits of God. Those seven horns are Samson's seven locks. And she shaved off the power of God's spirit off of him. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. That's what Delilah does in every church she gets into. Whether she's behind the pulpit or sitting in the pews, her role is to move that church out of this book. And it's happening all over this country. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Everywhere I go, and if people don't like this, then I get uninvited. <laughs> the NIV came out in 1973. The New Testament came out in 1973. They finished it around 1980. Did you know that there have been five major revisions of the New International Version since 1973? Try and memorize verses out of an NIV. New American Standard. All my preacher friends said, well, I use the New American Standard. It's most literal to the Greek and Hebrew. Three major revisions of the New American Standard, including the 2020 version. Now there's going to be a fourth one. John MacArthur, who is a Calvinist, has got a license from the Lockman Foundation to take the New American Standard and retranslate it to take out all the places where it says Lord, capital L-O-R-D, because that's His name. Amen. Did you know that every time the New Testament in Greek quotes the Old Testament where it has yod heh vah -Heh, Lord, in all capital letters, you know what the Greek word there is? Kyrios, which means Lord. So who told us that God's name was Lord? Was it the church? It was the Holy Spirit who told us that. Amen. So he's going to take all of those out. Then he's going to replace all the places where it says the word servant, like Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. You're a servant of God, are you not? And he's going to replace it with the word slave. Because Calvinists are slaves. Slaves do not have a choice. Did you have a choice? Of course you did. God put two trees in the midst of the garden. Tree of life, tree of knowledge of good and evil. And gave man a choice. We chose unwisely. That's why He provided a Savior for us. And we chose the Savior, didn't we? Somebody say amen. amen. I'm going to show you one book that has not changed 400 years. I would not have found what I'm going to show you had it not been for the study of one book only. I'm not going to get invited back. I know I'm not. <laughs> Here's a book written in 1866 called The Masonic Ladder. And it said, The Bible is full of Masonic secrets to the initiated. I read that and I went, God, you're right. The secret is in the Bible. Here's another book, Freemasonry in the Holy Land, that said the Holy Scriptures are the instruction books of the Lodge. And when you go into a Masonic Lodge, uh, let's see here. What do they have on the altar? A Bible. This is actually in the, um, in the Grand Lodge there in Washington, D.C. that I just showed you a picture of. They actually have two Lodge rooms. They have the greater hall, and then they have a smaller one where they, the Masons meet to do business. In the greater hall, on the altar, they have a copy of the Bible, and a copy of the Tanakh, and a copy of the Koran, and a copy of the Bhagavad Gita. There's like five religious books all together. Because after all, we all worship the same God, don't we? Well, you do if His name's Lucifer... Amen? But you go into the smaller lodge room and they just have one book on there and it's a 1611 King James Bible. 
So, let me go, oh, let me, how do I go back? Here we go, hang on, I gotta go back here. Uh, yeah, I won't read all that, I gotta move on here. So Jesus said, what I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. That is exactly opposite of masonry. In masonry, somebody will come to you. If you're in the lodge and you're working your way up, somebody will come to you and they will whisper in your ear. We're going to give you the secret name of God. Now, does God have a secret name? They're going to give you the secret name of God. And they'll go, Jabul An. Which is a combination of Jah for Jehovah, Bull for Baal, and on for Osiris. That's not God. That's not, that's not my God. And they say, if you tell anybody outside of the lodge, we will slit your throat from ear to ear. We will open up your bowels and take them out and we will burn you in, in the fire and take your ashes and scatter them to the four winds of the earth. Well, that's evangelism 101 for you. <laughs> And yet Jesus said, whatever I tell you, tell everybody! Amen. He's coming back! Amen. Amen! Tell everybody you know! So, here's the secret. Right here. Remember, they said, we don't tell it. We don't write it down. We just give it in symbol. So, the J and the B. That does not stand, sorry guys, for Jim Beam. <laughs> Which is probably why some guys join the lodge. Remember what this pillar was? Jachin. What was this one? Boaz. How tall were they? 23 cubits. 23 cubits. 46. Notice the opposites. Here we have superior and inferior. And notice that they are fused together here. Now, I started studying opposites in the Bible. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God called the light day, and the darkness He called night. And God divided the light from the darkness. In God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. Come out from among them, and be ye... What agreement at the temple of God with... You see the opposites? God, Satan, Christ, Antichrist, holy angels, devils, things like that. In our Bibles, they're told to separate. Can you wear, ladies, according to the Bible, are you supposed to wear men's clothes? Men. Why would you want to wear women's clothes? <laughs> I saw a YouTube video, a guy, grandpa walks into his element, kid's elementary school class and said, don't you ever put a dress on my five-year-old son ever again. Ooh. Teacher did it two days in a row. Uh. Notice this, potter, mater. That means father and mother. This is an image of the sun. This is the moon. They're opposite. By the way, the sun is always rendered in the Bible in the masculine. He. It's Christ. The moon is always rendered in the Bible as a her, she. Uh, triangle pointing up, triangle pointing down. All kinds of opposites here. And they're fused together. Joined together. Things that are opposite. So think of... What time? How much time do I have? When's, when's rush hour start in Wichita? That's what I want to know. So remember Jacob and Boaz. 23 cubits tall apiece, 46. That's where the chroma... And Masons say that our secret is hidden in Jacob and Boaz. What does that mean then? That their secret has something to do with human DNA. See, years ago... We didn't know what DNA was. Our forefathers, my grandfather, I never knew him. He died when my mom was five. He was an old Southern Baptist preacher. He didn't know what DNA was. He just read the Bible and preached it. 
But his grandson knows what DNA is because we live in a day where knowledge is being increased. Amen? Amen? So, check this out. In Solomon's temple, they have a winding staircase. What does DNA look like? I haven't shown you the good part about DNA. It's a ladder, right? Looks like a ladder when it's straightened out. Can you think of a story in the Bible that has a ladder in it? I didn't say say it, I said think about it. <laughs> the two legs of the ladder are Old Testament and New Testament. And what joins the Old Testament and the New Testament together? Well, in DNA, it's four base pairs. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. What joins the Old and the New Testament together? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And adenine, guanine, and cytosine are alike. Thymine's different. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the synoptic Gospels because they're alike, aren't they? John's different. You show me four things in the Bible and I'll show you one of them's different. Shem, Hem, Japheth, Noah. Noah. He's the one that God made a covenant with. Rachel, Leah, Bila, Zilpah. Who's different in those four? Rachel. She's the true love, Right? She's different. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Son of God. The fourth Daniel. is like the Son of God. He's different than the other three. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. You can do this all day long because God always is in order. He works in patterns. This is May, right? Didn't we have one of those last year? Same God, He does everything in order. How many seasons? Four. How many directions? Four. Four. Okay. Oh, this is the Masonic temple. And on the Masonic temple, one pillar has a globe of the earth. And the other pillar has a globe of the stars. Hmm. What are stars in the Bible? What are stars? Angels. Good ones and bad ones. So let's think about it. If masonry is about taking opposites and fusing them together, and on one pillar we have the globe of the earth, and one pillar we have the globe of the stars, what does masonry want to do with them? Join them together. So let me give you this one. For we wrestle not against, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. That's the first three. The fourth one's going to be different. The fourth one is spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, to move along. Oh, in, if you go to that lodge in Washington, D.C. that I talked to you about. And they, they're going to take you into that big lodge room. Count the steps going up. Because I'm like, what is it when you have to touch and count everything? Obsessive compulsive. I see these two winding staircases. One on right, one on the left. And I'm going, I know what this that is. I know what that is. And so they start walking up the steps and I'm going, one, two, three. There's 23 on this side and 23 on the other side. And I went, that's 46. You ought to be my wife. I'll drive you up the wall. We already looked at that verse. So inside this door, the house of the Temple Lodge. Remember, 33 here, 13 here, 46. You walk inside this door and turn around. And it's written above that door that masonry builds its temples where? 
The hearts of men. I did. I missed something. Take your Bible, turn to Revelation 4. The preacher before me was in Revelation 4, so let's just go to Revelation 4 and have us... You know, Noah Hutchings walked way slower than you did. <laughs> Try that sometime. The speakers will love you. I'm not going to read all this, but John got to see the temple of God in heaven, didn't he? Yes. Do you think that temple looks like this temple? Who said no? Get out! I'm not going to tell you unless you leave. <laughs> Where does Jesus live in you right now? That's the throne. And he said, I saw one sat on the throne. One. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is. And His name. I and the Father are. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are... One. By the way, every English Bible in the world, that's 1 John 5, 7. Every English Bible in the world has taken out 1 John 5, 7. Except one. Three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So John said, I saw one sit on the throne. Who's he seeing there? One. Amen? So the throne is your heart. And then he said, there were four living creatures, four beasts. Ezekiel saw, he called them four living creatures. They were angels. Living. Your heart has one chamber, two chambers, three chambers, Four chambers. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Then he said that around the throne was a sea of glass, clear as crystal. Surrounding your throne is a sack of water called the pericardium. When they stabbed Jesus, what they hit? Blood and water. The pericardium is the sea of glass, clear as crystal. When Solomon built the pedestal for the Ark of the Covenant, he put a sea of glass on there. Didn't he? Then John said, I heard thunders, lightnings, and voices. Your voice box is here. Thundering and lightning. What, is your, what makes your heart pump? Lightning. Electricity. Lightning. What does it sound like? Thunder. Then he said, I saw seven golden candlesticks, which are the seven spirits of God. The Spirit of God. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And how many lungs do you have? Two. Old Testament. New Testament. And your bronchial tube goes down and splits off into your two lungs. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bronchial tubes, just like the seven candlesticks in the temple of God. This is the seven spirits. Breath, spirit. Do you get it? Yes. Amen. Amen. Seven spirits of God. Then... He said, I saw 24 elders surrounding the throne. I have 12, and they're dressed in what color? I have 12 ribs on this side, 12 on this side. And they surround my four-chamber heart in a sea of glass with the seven spirits of God all right here. You are the temple of God. Turn to Daniel 2, and I'm going to quit. Here's the secret. Okay, here it is. 
And then you get the DVDs. I'm going to give you the secret. And then in those DVDs, I'll do more in-depth explanation with 90% less sweat. I sweat because I was electrocuted a few years ago. And it almost killed me. Daniel chapter 2. David, or Daniel said that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret. When I hit that, I knew I was there. Because I knew what secret Daniel was going to reveal. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. So he sees four kingdoms. How many? And what did I say about four things? One will be One's going to be different. Daniel saw, in Daniel 7, he saw four beasts, didn't he? And if you look in Daniel 7, he said the fourth beast was diverse from the other three. Didn't he? The fourth kingdom is diverse from the other three kingdoms. You have gold, silver, brass. And I want you to notice something. They're going down in value. Gold, silver, brass, Clay. iron. Clay. And then what's cheaper than iron? Clay. Dirt. That's us. On this earth right now, we're a commodity, aren't we? And we're cheap. So, what is the secret? The fourth kingdom is different. Because this was pure gold, pure silver, pure brass. But the iron was mingled. Who, who's our welders here? Anybody weld? Can you weld clay and iron together? Why not? It's all out of the ground, right? Won't work, will it? Neither will this. This fourth kingdom is they, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, remember they're the stars, Masonry had the globe of the earth and the globe of the stars. And Albert Pike said that this was a symbol for the earth, the female. This was a symbol for the heavens. There it is. He says it right there. And notice that they are joined together because the secret is they shall mingle themselves with what? The seed of men. What is the seed of men? His DNA. Wow. Every, every alien abduction story says the aliens were taking eggs from women, seed from men, and they were all involved in a hybridization program every abduction story how many of you know the secret now one person give that person a D give that lady back there a DVD everybody else get out thank you God bless you I gotta go